computer and uh, welcome everyone welcome to the forest coffee break uh this is the episode number uh 29 uh, almost 30th episode and uh, uh welcome thank you for joining today and uh, as usual this is a very open space for you know, any kind of questions and, and topics that you have so let me open to you if you have any topics that you want to bring up any uh questions or anything that you are working with And you're usually very shy, but I'll give it a try. Who do we have here? Uh, uh, Bruno, Sam, Jeremy, Bobby, uh, McGray. I don't know who you are. If you want to present yourself, uh, Nijelko, Terry, good morning. And you, as usual, you are, you are welcome to open your microphone. And um, if this is your first time, you can also present. This is not, yeah. Okay, so before that, let me go from uh, inside what's going on from, from the other side. And then I'll give you back uh, and a chance again to talk about what you are doing. So from here, uh, what we are working with these last few weeks, actually AU is coming very close. Um, if you haven't signed up for register for AU, uh, this is your chance. So as usual, au.autodesk.com, that's the uh, exciting new thing. There will be, of course, there will be Forge classes, uh, API from our team, from, from other customers, developers like yourself. And uh, I hope that everyone is already there. And uh, preparing for you, or close to you in a way, we are preparing this uh, survey that uh, we actually already, is already there, right? This survey for design automation. So I'm, I was wondering if you, if uh, people here are using design automation for uh, Revit, and um, if you are, if you are aware of this survey, and uh, what kind of projects you have with design automation for for Revit. Anyone with? Anyone working with the automation for Revit? No. Okay. We don't, but we would like to. This is lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the function we are missing is converting Revit models to Navisworks. And so, uh, what, what, what do you mean, Navsworks or, or Revit? From Revit to NWC, like doing the conversion import. Uh -huh. oh, uh, oh, export from Revit to NWC or create an NWC from, from an RVT file. Yes. Oh, okay, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, um, actually, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's possible because that's, that's okay. I, I don't think that's possible because today, the way to do it is that you have to uh, open Navis and then import the, the Revit file, right? It's not an export, it's an import, if I'm not mistaken. But that's a good point. Um, I, I believe that you can uh, answer this kind of question here in the survey, uh, uh, Vaish, that's uh, uh, good feedback. And uh, we can definitely look into it. But yeah, I think definitely that we would require the the automation for ne for Navsworks, right? To do something like that, which we we don't have yet, <laughs> but you can do some of that with uh, BIM three sixty model coordination and uh, other features. Yeah, I mean it, it's a it's a known limitation. Like we can export NWC from Revit uh, from within Revit, like NWC out, uh, but it's a known limitation for design automation for Revit. Mm. It's, it's oh, listed okay. in the functionality that it's not oh, supported. All right. Okay. Thanks for educating me. <laughs> yeah. So let me take this chance here. It's a good point. Yeah. Uh, I think if you look at the documentation here, and uh, that, yeah, developer guide, right? Yeah. Um, restrictions, right? Automation for Revit. Yeah, where is it? Uh, export Navsworks not available. Mm, okay. 
Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, just so interesting limitations. Cool, thank you. It's a good point. Uh, and when when you export, is that for model coordination? What, what do you what, why do you need to export to Navis? Yeah, from for model coordination. Like right now, we have to open the Revit file and export NWC for model coordination, but we would like to do it automatically. Uh, mm -hmm. If yeah, like once a week or twice a week. Okay. Did you look at the model coordination API? Uh, we haven't. Okay, so, so lucky day then. Uh, let's look here quickly. So if you go to the documentation uh, API reference and uh, there is a model coordination, right? That you can do some, um, some of that uh, clash inclusive. And uh, we do have samples on that as well. So GitHub, Autodesk, Forge. And uh, if you go for uh, repos, and I believe it's your type clash that should show you a few uh, samples we have and uh, coordination as well. Oh, no, we don't have anything with coordination specifically, do we? Ah, oh, yeah, clash. Yeah, it's just use oh, model coordination walkthrough. Okay, interesting. I'll, yeah, I'll take a mm -hmm. look at one of those. See if yeah, this, yeah, this is part of BIM 360, right? This is part of BIM 360. So it's a, it's a, Inside BIM 360, you can do you can do some model coordination, and that's the API to do that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for joining the conversation. <laughs> yeah. where, where, where are you calling? Where are you calling from? Uh, Denver. Denver. Okay. So it's mid morning. So it's still time for coffee, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I think Kevin, uh, Kian, you're saying that you use model derivative instead, but that will be to export the viewables and and uh, join the viewables, right? Not to do yeah, the coordination I, itself. No, I think I think I actually I got that wrong. I had a feeling that there was. I, I mean, I know that there was a restriction in terms of exporting via the design automation API, but I thought. I thought there was some other translation API that we meant to use instead for that, but um, I, I I may be misremembering. I, so, I think you can go from Revit to IFC using model derivative, but not to Navis. Yeah, IFC for sure. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Uh, I think Sam was also asking plan to upgrade .NET standard for fabrication API or fabrication core DB. DLL. I think those are part of the Revit API, I guess. Um, if you want to open your microphone. But I, I believe so. Um, yeah, so the, the, the Revit uses .NET framework. And I believe right now the latest version of the .NET framework, which I believe is compatible with the .NET standard but it's not to run on, on a non-Windows environment. It, I believe it still needs uh, Revit to run those, to run DLLs, right? If I'm getting your question right. Sam. Okay. And uh, there is also a question from, from Terry. Uh, and again, you are welcome to open your microphone. I'm just reading what you were typing. Maybe you are shy, so don't worry. So Terry is saying that any plans to support in newer .NET frameworks, uh, where? You wanna open up? Hang on, I had to get myself unmuted. <laughs> uh, well, we're, we're starting to roll some things out to run in our Kubernetes clusters. Mm -hmm. And as much as we can, we like to run those on Linux containers because the Windows containers is a little, say they're a little hanky. They have, they had issues and, and don't run the smoothest. And, and we still have a few things. And actually, I think Sam mentioned some of the fabrication stuff that requires some of the Windows underpinnings. So we're not able to move those out that way yet. And we're looking at how far out that might be that we can start, you know, everything's more .NET standard based. Plus, I know .NET 7 is coming to end of life in about a year or so and some things like that. And just wondering what your plans are for getting things moved up to those newer .NET frameworks. 
So yeah, so you're you're talking newer.net framework for Revit then. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So as far as I understand, if you're running the Revit API, you still need Windows container to run .NET, uh, uh, the, the, the .NET li library for, for Revit, right? Because the, the .NET references for Revit are not standalone. They're actually just uh, a layer on top of the Revit API. Okay. Meaning that you need the Revit engine and that DLL is just allowing you from .NET to call the inner core of, of Revit. Okay, so so until Revit makes a move to get past that, if you will, we're we're pretty much stuck with having to be able to run on something that supports Windows. Well, now you can run Revit on the cloud with design automation, right? So that's the the way to run it. Here, what we do is we have Windows machines, we uh, several instances of Windows machine with Revit, AutoCAD, etc. Right. So when you when you run your job. You are running on a, on a Windows machine, so that's the way for you to delegate this kind of thing, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so we what we just need to look at what we're doing and see if we can do it with the Design Automation API instead of what we're using today. Yeah, cool. Okay. So which yeah, which which is kind of interesting because uh, comes back to the to the uh, survey I was mentioning before, right? Yep. So if you if you're using, uh, let me open that again here, and I believe I did share that on the uh, chat window. If you're doing something with design automation that is not supported or something else, right? Answer the survey. Uh, it's very open at some point that you can just say, I'm working on this thing. And that's good for us to understand what you're doing. And uh, when you are saying that you have to maintain your own container or something like that, that's you know, way too complicated. We have, have several patches and it's it's better to delegate that to design automation and you know, just you know, pay by the hour that you are using. So yeah, yeah, if you can put the here. link to that in the chat, we'll be sure yeah. to go through there and fill it out. I believe I did, but I will do it again just for uh oh, no, sorry. I did I did send you one person specific. That's why okay. <laughs> I was replying and uh okay, my mistake. Now it's there. So Thank answer you. the survey, tell us what you are doing with design automation for, for Revit. And uh and well, you know, design automation runs the Revit engine. So uh whenever we release the, a newer version of Revit. Design automation will inherit or use the same the new version of Revit as well. So that also applies for Revit. So no, anything goes here. Yeah, thank you, Terry, for sharing. Good point. Hi, Jim. She hasn't seen you in a while. In a while, because it's so good to see you. Yes. Um, something you just said, uh, design automation, does it support the current version of, in this case, Revit, and the prior version, do I get to choose which one? Yes, you can. Uh, so if you look maybe one or two years ago, the, the general policy for Autodesk was to support current plus three older versions. But I believe right now we're expanding that. Uh, so the best way actually to, to make sure that the version you want is supported is to use the API for it, right? So if you go to the documentation, and select design automation and go to the API reference, you can see that um, here engines, you say get engines, you can just call this endpoint and that you get you all the versions that are supported. So I believe this is just a sample reply, but Revit specifically, we support 18, 19, 20, 21. Perfect. But yeah, the, the API will give you the information that you want. This is very important, specifically for Revit, because if you open a Revit file with a newer version of the engine, that will migrate your file. So you want to make sure that you have the exact version for the exact file that you have. What else? I see a lot of new names. And uh, again, thank you all for joining. Any other interesting topics that we want to bring up? Let me bring another topic then, because I'm talking too much, because I'm, I think Augusto, I have too many coffees I'll, today. Oh, go ahead, Jim. Augusto, I'll make one up, because I hear okay. it again and again. And maybe we can get advice from the audience here. Um, people want to use the Forge model derivative and viewer to view Revit families, RFA files. Um, and we hear this again and again and again. Yet, 
you know, people, I think people know RFAs are not one model, they're actually a parametric set of models. And until you kind of apply the parameters, you kind of don't know what it is from a geometry point of view. Um, so when people ask to view RFAs, you know, you know, right now, the only way to kind of do that is to load the RFA into Revit, like using design automation, and then capturing the, you know, a thumbnail or geometry or whatever you happen to want, because Revit can actually take that RFA definition and turn it into a into, into an instance. Um, but people still continue to ask for one of you RFAs. Um, and I don't know if that's because they're thinking, well, this is like an AutoCAD block, or is it they really just need a good thumbnail so people know what the RFA is? Um, or do they actually, you know, do they actually want to, uh, when they want to visualize an RFA, do they want people to feed in parameters to get the specific instance? Um, a anybody have a view on this out there? Uh, hello. Uh, Hi, I would, Moses. I would, I would say that I, I'm familiar with this desire to see um, RFAs, especially for the purposes of um, family content management and understanding um, what the current uh, status of these families are. I would say that the default parameters would be a good starting place because these RFAs do have uh, default types that they open up with in Revit, correct? Uh, as, as I'm familiar, and I, I think that would be a good, good starting point. Say, hey, by default, those default parameters or types are, are what, what it's going to show you first and then give you the option to go to other types. So showing the default values and options to see the other types, you mean? Yeah. So that means if I hear this right, and Augusto could correct me, we would need, we Autodesk would need to get the Revit team that does the model derivative translation worker to, um, to take the RFA and load in the default parameters and then output an SVF file. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, Z Zandi is also saying that would will be nice to include the type catalogs and lookup table. If you wanna open your microphone, you can also describe a bit better what you mean. Zandi. Yeah, I I've been uh, develop or creating uh, Revit families for for a while for a very long time, and uh, most of the parts that we use uh, are the pipe fittings, uh, duct connectors, or duct fittings, and those are driven by lookup tables. Um, and uh, some uh, we do use uh, type catalogs, so they uh, those families are driven by whatever size or uh, length we put in to those uh, type catalogs, uh, it changes what it shows uh, for the Revit family. And so I'm reacting with it would take a pretty significant uh, change in the Revit translation worker that's used by model derivative. Correct. To take these, to take these additional inputs. Yes, uh, like visibility, we do have some equipments have VFDs uh, built in. We uh, put uh, type yes, no on uh, the catalog to show if, if the family includes a VFD or the equipment includes VFD. So that changes uh, the outlook or how the, fam uh, the equipment would gonna look like. Yeah. And Augusto, I sit here and go, the translation, the model the root of translation worker for, our, for Revit is a Revit server. So you would think all the pieces are there, but it would need several new, I don't know if it's endpoints or parameters to kind of feed in the additional information. 
Yeah, makes sense. Or maybe even a pre-processing with design automation, right? Yeah, well, the, the, what I'm the the kind of what I'm bringing up, Augusto, is today everybody here can do this using design automation, but it's kind of heavy lifting when you just want to view a family. Yes, that's it's true. a lot of work to just view a family. Yeah, and I I think the translator is an uh, instance of Revit, so you know it's just a matter of configuring it, right? I suspect yeah. there's more to it than that, which is why it hasn't been done. Um, but you know, clearly, we should dig a little deeper with the uh, with uh, and I forget her name. Who are, whoever owns that translation worker for Revit? Yeah, there, we all know there may be some complexities that we don't fully appreciate, which is why they've ducked it, or maybe we haven't yelled loud enough, saying, "Look, this comes up every day." Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Moses and uh, Zandip for the feedback. We're definitely going to follow that up. Um, there's another question uh, from William. I'm trying to read here, but you can also open your microphone if you want. Uh, can I subscribe to events? Edit mode creation begins and edit mode creation ends. No, they are not listed on documentation. Mm. I'll have to check if they're not if they are not documented. Uh, probably this is something on the uh, extension specific. So, uh, William, can you would you mind forwarding that to the Forge help so we can uh, investigate that? We need some debugging to understand what's going on there. So it's uh, forge.help at autodesk.com, or you can also use uh, Stack Overflow and just tag Autodesk Viewer, and we're definitely going to investigate it. And uh, Moses, uh, yeah, sure. You, can, you wanna ask about Forge login? Go ahead. Um, so um, we, we, we're doing this process where we're um, using a Rhino inside Revit and creating um, uh, separate models uh, derived from our Revit models that we can more easily use for energy modeling and um, uh, that, uh, lives in the uh, other platform um, and Rhino Insight Revit is, has become convenient for that and for the visualization. Um, but in order to share this, uh, I was thinking of exporting it to a kind of simplified 3JS visualization and sharing that with our team. Uh, this allows us to keep our Revit production model intact and um, kind of uh, just keep it going. We're not we're not altering it. We have this three three J three JS visualization that can just live on the browser. Can that be uh, put behind um, the? I think it's either the three leg or the two leg authentication for just the, the the security login. Just log in with your Autodesk ID and this 3JS uh, visualization would then show in the screen and the browser? Yeah, so um, the Autodesk sign-in uh, uses the standard OAuth implementation, right? So it will give you um, uh, the user information and uh, the permissions that person ha uh, has, if he is a three-legged, the permissions they have on BIM 360 or Fusion, right? But if the file is hosted somewhere else, not on the Autodesk domain, right? We just give you an ID for that user that you need. You would need a, 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 an additional database saying, okay, this user, this user ID have permission to see this or that kind of information, right? What, what you can possibly do is to match that with the, with the information that you have. So let's say I'm going to sign in on your application your, applic your application will call the Autodesk, I don't know, BIM360 and say, okay, if that user has access to BIM360, they also have access to this additional information, right? That's one way. So let's say you have a database with additional information for a BIM360 model. You can say if that user have access to the BIM360 model, they also have access to the additional information that's connected to that database. So to summarize, uh, we can authenticate the user the user can or cannot have access to an Autodesk service. 
but the the uh, the permission for your system for your data that you are hosting you have to manage that permission you you need that a table that will match user and whatever resource they have access to i see okay that that makes sense uh thanks um, Thank you. you know maybe i'll jump in and get myself in trouble because moses you brought up 3js um I'm going to make a statement which is kind of forward looking. You know, we hear again and again from partners who've been working with 3JS and the Forge Viewer that the fact that the Forge Viewer works on this ancient version of 3JS 0.71 um, is constantly a problem because you'll see some capability 3JS has had for two years, but it's post 0.71, and then you kind of have to backward port it. It kind of turns into a mess. Um, you should know we are taking a serious look and doing heavy work into rejiggering the viewer to support a more recent, if not the latest version of 3JS. Um, so no commitment, don't say I said it, but if you're doing a lot of 3JS work, um, you know, maybe you do want to wait three, four, five months and you know, knowing, or maybe you want to do something hacky knowing that, hey, Autodesk is kind of behind the scenes going to do this modernization of our 3JS support. Um, yeah. And, and, and share with, and if you want to send us or describe to us what we are trying to do with, with the 3JS and what's the version that you need, that will also help us understand better how can we do this, this, this migration that Jim just mentioned. I think I'll be in a, I'll be in a position to actually show it, probably the next coffee chat what I'm what I'm trying to do. Oh, yeah, looking forward to it. Yes, definitely. And maybe a, another side note, as part of this effort to support a more modern version of 3JS, um, I'll tell you within Autodesk, it's been a bit complicated supporting open source. And, you know, what what can we what do we contribute back to open source? And what do we kind of keep in house? Um, you know, part of what's going on here is um, there's probably going to be a flood of uh, Autodesk contributions to 3JS um, to create this alignment, um, which will be good for everybody. It'll be good for the 3JS community. It'll be good for the Forge community. Um, so uh, it's it's promising. Um, but again, be a little careful uh, when I say these things. Um, you know, those of you who've worked with us on SVF and SVF2, you know, we thought it was going to happen in six months and it took two years. Um, Hopefully this effort we're doing around 3JS is more of the six months effort, not the two years, but we, you know, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jim. Uh, just because we're very close to the time, there is one more question from uh, Toge that you wanna ask about DWF viewing. Hey guys. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, I think it was two or three weeks ago, you guys published a blog post about DWFs about uh, viewing them, you know, in a native format rather than model derivative. Uh, is there any, you know, good explanation how we can do it? Because our application is that currently, you know, doing all the model derivative work, meaning the customer is, has to use forge credits. So does this mean that it's going to eliminate the forge credit use? Or I, I, I couldn't really understand how it's going to, you know, work. Yeah, so there is the, the blog post that I mentioned. I believe this is the one here. There is an extension for that. Uh, the extension is called Autodesk DWF. And you just load the extension and say, load the module, point into the DWF file. So the answer is yes. You won't have to do translations to DWF if you have the DWF file already. Oh, yeah. So our workflow starts from Vault create the DWFs from there, take them to Forge. So I'm not going to be using model derivative anymore. Well, yeah. well, you'll be you'll be surprised. The reason the viewers directly supporting DWF is because our internal vault team said it's got to do that. I need it. <laughs> okay, I like it. <laughs> yeah. So that blog post talks about DWF, PDF, and uh, we have a, an additional blog post about GLTF. They, all those three versions are supported directly. You don't have to translate them. But I would have to I would suggest you to uh, give it a try with uh, a, a variety of modules. When we release the PDF version, uh, there is no 
very edgy case that it was not working as it, as it, as it should. So please give it a test. Show us if you have any, uh, uh, message us if you have any, any trouble with loading the DWF files, but it should work. There's, there's an extension for that, just like for PDFs and uh, GLTF. Well, Augusto, Thank GLTF, you, that's, a, that's a future thing, right? Not officially well, yet. The no, for decoding, the, the, for viewing GLTFs, yeah. uh, it works just fine. Um, hang on a second. Uh, yeah, for GLTFs, um, it's just, uh, viewing GLTFs, which is what 3JS and Babylon JS do already, um, and it doesn't do a, it's it's not certified GLTF viewer, um, but for the DWF files, uh, this is more interesting, um, and and it'll be more reliable than our PDF converter. So the DWF, the DWF, um, the DWF viewer that we have, the extension, um, took the the DLLs and the assembly code and converted it into WASM. And so it's 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 the DWF engine running inside a browser through WASM, and so it's it's a one for one. The engine that we use on the desktop is exactly the same as the engine that's running inside the browser. So you shouldn't have shouldn't have too many complications. Yeah. Okay. Michael. So this this sounds interesting. Just just one second, Jim. So because we had some problems with overriding material, and this keeps on going all the time. Adam knows about it. Uh, maybe this also would el eliminate this problem. Uh, it's just for viewing. I'm not sure it will. Um, any modifications to it probably won't work. Yeah. So if so, you try okay, to hack the so browser, yeah, yeah, it, it yeah, won't work. Yeah, give it a yeah, give it a try. Uh, uh, you, you you don't have to change much because it's just say uh, on the documentation. Just say load from local load the extension and load the module. Then you can try on your files. Uh, we can definitely use some, some feedback on that if you have any, any problems. Mr. Beal, when you say we support GLTF, is that like a public beta or you know it works, but we officially haven't documented it? Let's be clear kind of where we're at with that. Sorry, Jim, I'm just also... juggling two things here. Um, <laughs> just really quickly, GLTF, we can view GLTF, but we do not generate GLTF. Autodesk does not generate GLTF. We can take somebody else's GLTF and view that in a browser in 3JS, and we've got a backported version of a 3JS viewer, but we cannot produce 3JS. And that's all I can say. Got it. Is that in the doc shit, GLTF viewing, you know, native viewing? There, there is, there's a blog post on how to, to load GLTF in the browser. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, in, in the official developer's guide, there's a section on GLTF as well. I'm behind, that's what happens when I take a long vacation. But yeah, that's don't, don't, don't um, I mean, it's only for viewing GLTF. You yep, can view yep. GLTF in standard 3JS. So it's, it's yeah. It's 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 kind of like people wanting to load an OBJ file in the Forge viewer. It, 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 yeah, it has limited value. Now, producing GLTF would have a lot of value. Yeah. So here's just a blog post that uh, Mike was mentioning. And in case you need it, I will also post all of those posts on the when I publish this uh, the recording as well. Hey, thank you. Uh, just before we finish, we are slightly over time, but uh, thank you very much for attending today. The next coffee break, it's again in two weeks, September 8th, same link, same time. And uh, thank you for joining today. Hope to see us on the next one. Thank you. Yeah, bye then.